Byron, I, you know, obviously some of this is related to the macro, maybe some calendar issues, but have you been struck by the action the last day and a half? Well, great to be back, and uh, I would pull it out even a layer above that. I've been struck by the action the last 60 days. Uh, there's certainly been some specific outliers with some bad news, you know, C3AI, Agora with the Chinese intervention in EdTech, et cetera. But across the basket, the cloud industry and software holistically has just been hammered. It's down almost 30% now in the last 60 days. Um, and you can look at this as a mix of fear and taxes and a, a number of drivers, but it's been quite dramatic. What, what makes you so um, encouraged by the action in some of these cloud names? Well, fundamentally, these businesses remain the drivers of the new economy. And we have to remember that all of those trends that people were excited about uh, a year ago in the 2020 market, when this basket returned almost 100 percent, those remain today. The, the digital transformation, the AI ML imperative, the movement to cloud, uh, especially with the Omicron resurgence, we need to remember that these stocks are the enablers of the work from home and the distributed economy. And so when you look at this market now down 30 percent throughout last year, I was on the show many times talking about the high quality of these names, but admittedly the high prices and saying that they've been forward priced by about a year. Well, we've now rolled forward in that year. And we've taken a 30% after Christmas sale discount. And so you now have these businesses trading at mid-teens multiples, which I absolutely, and for the first time in many appearances on this show, can say the basket feels like a buying opportunity today. Byron, there's a difference, though, in how a lot of these companies have been treated. I'm looking at Shopify, which is down more than 8% today. And I'm looking at Zoom, which I think is down more than 6% today. Zoom is back to levels where it was right around the time when the pandemic was just getting started. Shopify is still up for the past 12 months, I believe, but both have these interesting stories that have room to build on, but I think there's a question of exactly how they're going to uh, expand their influence, isn't there? So, so how should uh, invest investors distinguish between the different uh, types of discounts and stories? Yeah, so you've got the, the premium uh, names, the data dogs and the snowflakes still trading uh, deep into the double digits for multiples. But again, a company like Snowflake has been growing at triple digit rates now for over 13 consecutive quarters. And so with their leadership team and growth rates, you certainly can see a premium there is deserved. But the names you mentioned, you look like a Zoom, you look at uh, DocuSign, you look at Twilio, as well as Adobe and Salesforce. These are companies trading at you know, seven to 15 times revenue. Uh, levels that they haven't been at in many months. And frankly, if you look at the basket trading in the 12s now, that goes back to pre-2018 levels. That seems like premium high quality names that are driving this digital transformation that are now at extremely reasonable prices, both by historical levels and when you overlay their growth rates. These businesses that are growing at 30, 40, 50%, many of them like Adobe generating you know 40% free cash flow and others you know deep into the double digits. These are premium names that are going to persist. And at these multiples, I feel like the market has, has oversold and we've gone to this fear mode um, and greed at some point here will settle back in. Right. But Byron, part of the sell off has had to do with the macro environment that this group is facing in the upcoming year. Right. They're facing a backdrop of Fed tightening. So what is it? What's the catalyst that's actually going to create another re-rating of these stocks? Yeah, there's a backdrop of chaos ac across the whole market, certainly. Uh, you could add the, the Build Back Better pause, the CPI print, which led to you know this Fed pivot. There's a lot of uncertainty around Omicron, the reopening, the supply chain issues. Of all of those, um, I would argue that most of those are neutral to positive, including Omicron for the sector. And so the one that stands out is the Fed movements in reaction to the CPI and this inflation reaction that has sent people to the fear mode, which has them chasing FANG stocks and higher uh, earning and free cash flow stocks. However, um, when you look at this basket and software specifically, it's inherently deflationary. They are the drivers of this shift. Those trends are going to remain. And in fact, many that are selling into enterprise markets um, have a multi-year horizon in their buying universe that's going to roll through 2022, 2023 and beyond. And so I don't see a slowdown in those overall trends. I see a pricing situation where people felt that they may have been running hot last year, but the, this reaction seems oversold and um, way overbaked. 